For all we know, ECMO is extremely efficient and it just comes to gas exchange. So what we want to do is um, provide enough oxygenation and decarboxylation to the blood in order to de-escalate the ventilator settings. What we just don't know for sure right now is the right time point to initiate ECMO support. So, the major challenges when designing these trials are at first the statistical power. So, these um, trials involving ECMO are extremely resource consuming and also very complex and they need a high level of expertise at the uh, trial centers. But the other thing, and which might just be more important, is the ethical issue. Because we know that providing ECMO support for some patients may be life-saving, so designing a study which controls ECMO against a group that does not receive ECMO is ethically unacceptable these days. It was done in 2009 with the CESAR trial, um, which um, delivered preliminary very important data, but nowadays these studies just have to be signed differently. So the EOLIA trial was a multi-centric randomized controlled trial conducted in France and it compared um, early implementation of ECMO support for patients with ALDS compared to patients who just received conventional support but they actually had the possibility to cross over to ECMO. So the study was um, terminated prematurely after inclusion of 75% of patients because of utility to reach the primary endpoint. So the primary endpoint was um, mortality at 60 days and after inclusion of these patients, um, the endpoint was just slightly missed with a p-value of 0.07. So what is very important to note is that 28% of these patients who were in the control group eventually crossed over to receive ECMO. And when you look at the compound secondary endpoint consisting of mortality or crossover to ECMO, the results were actually highly clinically and statistically significant. So when you also look at the safety profile of ECMO, this was actually excellent, most probably due to the high um, experience, decades of experience concerning ECMO at the um, trial centers in France, which is also important to see that the secondary endpoints, for example, time of vasopressors, time of ventilation, and especially time of renal replacement therapy, there was a strong positive signal concerning the patients who were on ECMO in the first place. Also, it seemed like that when you um, provide ECMO to patients who have a less severe degree of ARDS, so the PF ratio is a bit better, and these patients seem to benefit the most from early implementation of ECMO. So the major limitation of this study was the assumption of the statistical power. So the investigators thought that the mortality in the control group would be as high as 60%, which is very high, but this is data from the CESAR trial, so it's probably justified. And then the investigators assumed that there would be an absolute risk reduction in mortality of 20%. 20% was extremely high, but when you want to power such a trial, you have to have a huge difference for justifying the relatively low number of participants of 331. So if they were to assume a more realistic risk reduction, like 10% or maybe 15%, the trial would have lasted for more than 10 years. So it comes to a question of the feasibility of these trials. And also, of course, the crossover option in the control group was an issue, and which stopped actually from reaching the primary endpoint. But as I discussed before, these are just ethical issues that are unavoidable in these, studies, in these studies. So despite this trial being traditionally considered to be negative, that means that the, the primary endpoint was not reached, there was clear evidence that there is some benefit in terms of mortality and especially when it comes to secondary endpoints. So future research will probably not focus on the question if we should implement ECMO um, in severe ARDS, but rather what's the right time point and especially what are supportive measures to be taken under ECMO therapy, which means should we put patients in a prone position and should we provide ultra low tidal ventilation. So these are questions what future prospective research is probably going to focus on.